Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're going to look at some numbers today, and I'm going to make a bold prediction about the first quarter. And those of you that watch me know I never do that, but I'm going to stick my neck out this time. So welcome, and please comment. Let me know what you think, because I'm going to run some things by you here today, and I'd like to hear what you think, because uh, it's just, I'm just one guy. And so this channel is a discussion. Um, it's not a here's what's going to happen. So it's a, uh, it's a discussion. So let me start by reading something that I saw from the Cromford report here real quick. It says, there's no way to break it to you gently. The bad situation, supply situation is getting worse or at least worse from a buyer's perspective. In January, we should be seeing a lot of new listings piling up, ready for the surge of buyers arriving after the Super Bowl is done. And I'll show you that number. But we're not getting more supply. It's already going lower than the start of the year. This is quite a shock, but not exactly unprecedented. It happened in January 2021, but that was a precursor to a spring of absolute madness and frenzy. This is telling us the bull market has a lot of legs in it. I agree. I agree. And here's one of the reasons I agree. So today, we have 3,718 homes that came on the market with 3522 going under contract. And we only have 5,500 homes on the market. Normally on Thursday, that starts creeping up. It didn't happen. So here's what it looks like on the seven-day moving average. The standout here is that if you look, i got to make a couple quick clicks here before I go here. So bear with me. So the standout here is that you can see that the yellow line is the number of homes that go under contract. The blue line is the number of listings. Last year, at the same time, homes going under contract exceeded listings at a clip of about 400 homes until we got to March and it tapered off a little bit. But it evened out and the market started getting really frantic in May in June, April and May, you can see that it really peaked right here. Well, right now, our listings under contract are not catching up. Why is that? It's the virus. Last year, we had 3,495 homes um, come on the market and, and with 3,793 go under contract. About 350 homes more than what came on. This year, it's less. Um, at the end of January, contracts beat listings by 400 a week last year until March. Then it all changed and it went crazy. So when I say it's the virus, um, I sincerely think that's what it is. People are not willing to list right now. And it's really hard to show homes right now. It's also very hard in the industry. Um, I've got COVID today. I'm supposed to be able to go out tomorrow. I can't. I can tell. I, I don't feel great. So, um, And I've already had all three shots. <laughs> so... so um, it's, it's, it's out there. In fact, up in Washington State, where I'm from, uh, there's two towns, Port Angeles and Squim. They have a population combined of about 35,000. They only have 23 homes on the market. Imagine that if you're a real estate agent up there trying to, trying to sell. So um, I think what we're seeing is just a reluctance to let people in the home again. And people are going to have to wait until this all subsides. Now, the industry is also going to, you're going to see some pinch points in the industry. Just like you are in the grocery business, the lumber business, everywhere there's shortages. So if you're waiting for your home to close right now, be patient because the escrow offices are going to be a little short-staffed. Most escrow and title companies are working from home. But if somebody's too sick to work, they got to pass it off to somebody else. That may slow things down. When you fund in the morning, you're supposed to record that afternoon. That's taking a little longer than it should. So be patient because there are some major shortages out there uh, when it comes to labor. The other thing that I'm seeing is looking at the data, we're worried, <coughs> excuse me, about interest rates. We're seeing here that today's mortgage rates, actually yesterday's, we haven't got an improvement yet. Excuse me for coughing. 3.52, yesterday we were 3.6. My theory, I think we hit a ceiling. We're not going to see great economic news coming out, and we're not right now anyway. I mean, the, the economy is going kind of gangbusters. But the bond market reacts to bad employment news, and there's just not a lot of people going back to work right now, and I don't see those numbers when they're published next month getting any better. Do you? And if they aren't getting any better, then rates are not going to go up. So I think we've hit a ceiling now of about 3.6, and I'm going to try and get some data out of Pat tomorrow, and we'll talk about this at length. But I think we've hit that peak. 
I also don't think the Fed is going to be pulling back as hard as they thought they were because the data is going to be a little slower. And they, uh, the market yesterday reacted because although inflation is high, it isn't as high as it was last month. So it came down a little bit. So the market was very positive. So all of this bodes well for interest rates. Um, and when we look at some of the numbers here, um, I'm going to go back to the Cromford report. I'm going to move this over here for just a second. And uh, bear with me here. I'm going to move one more thing. I know this is hard to see, so I'm just going to read it to you. Paradise Valley is down to an all-time low of 93 single-family homes for sale, 160 last year. Scottsdale is down to 344 single-family homes for sale. There were 569 this time last year. Mesa is down to 314. There were 483 as of October 3rd. Phoenix is down to 777. There were 1,995 just one month ago. We've never seen anything like this. This is going to be very interesting to watch. I think what we may... Well, I'm going to tell you what I think in a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a couple more numbers here. Fear of even higher mortgage rates may be heating up winter home buying. So people rushed out in December because they thought rates were going to go up, which they did. So they went up to like 3.65 and then they came back down to 3.55. So we'll see what the news is telling people and how they react. Uh, but we're not seeing the buyer traffic continue at the rate that it was in December. So people rushed out to get homes. The other thing that I'm seeing, and this is interesting, and I um, I saw an agent yesterday named, named uh, uh, Kayla R Rose uh, Zudilio. I apologize, I'm butchering her last name. And she was talking about iBuyer traffic in Gilbert. So I looked up iBuyer traffic in the neighboring city of Chandler. It's very interesting. It shows here that these are the iBuyer homes that are for sale that are held by um, institutional buyers like Offerpad, Open Door, and Zillow. Zillow is still selling homes. They sell have a bunch on the market. There's 56 out of 168. 33% of the homes that are for sale were purchased by iBuyers. They're listed by iBuyers. Now, Offerpad's the one that's getting the most aggressive here. Look at this. They have a listing of 999900 929900 They never used to play above $400,000. Now they're going after the big ones. Well, what does that mean? If 33% of our listings right now are from iBuyers, they bought those 90 days ago. If people are not willing to have a lot of traffic in their houses, they need the list and they don't want people walking through their homes, they may see the iBuyer model as a solution for them, even though the fees are going to be higher and it's going to cost them more money. They've got a lot of equity. I think they're going to pull the trigger. That number could climb up above 40% as we get towards the end of February. So right now, people buying, they're going to be, or selling to the iBuyers are going to be, we're going to see those listed in March. The other thing I think I see coming is there's still demand, but right now our market is getting wound up like a tight spring. And if our employment comes back, the virus slips out, things start to get back to normal, we could be punching out of the gate. March is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen. And the first quarter numbers, when it comes to real estate appreciation, I think is going to be staggering. Now, it could be a very short trip. So it could be that March and April just absolutely explode. And we'll trickle down from there. But all the numbers I'm seeing right now is watch out. March is going to be hotter than all get out. So just a theory. But based on the numbers I'm seeing, the demand is down now because we can't go out. I'm not going out today. <laughs> so I might ride around in my truck for a little bit. But uh, uh, demand is there uh, wanting to go out, but they can't. Sellers want a list, but they can't. Once that all turns around, look out. I think it's going to be interesting, especially the iBuyer traffic um, as far as the number of listings they hold in March. I think, mark my word, it's going to be 40%. And if I forget to look it up, please remind me. Everybody stay well. Have a great week. I am interviewing uh, Jeb Smith in Southern California tonight at 6 o'clock. I want to see what's going on in his market. Then tomorrow, 3 o'clock, we talk to Pat. Have a great day. Take care. Mm -hmm.